Guys, 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 today we have breaking news, maybe the end of a two-year saga, maybe even three if you start counting it from the day that it occurred. Today we have an answer, finally, a solid, clear answer, well not as clear as we'd like, but an answer from the Court of Arbitration for Sport regarding Camila Valieva's doping case. It looks like it is over and the result is a four-year ban. Yes, a four-year ban on the sport. However, it's not not as clear as you would think. It's not a four-year ban starting now. Actually, she's probably already served the majority of it. But before we get into any more details, let's get a recap of where we left off. By the way, interlude, I will be talking about the US Nationals. I was midway watching them when this all occurred and therefore it's gonna be a little bit delayed because first we need to put an end to the story that I feel like I've been covering for forever. We've been in limbo, maybe even a layer of hell <laughs> if you're on my side. But now we have an answer. An answer which I don't know how I feel about it because it feels like a slap on the wrist. And I'll explain more about that. But let's recap where we left off. Camila Valieva was 15 years old at the time when she went to Beijing Olympics 2022. It came out that she had been positive for doping back in the Russian nationals. Not at the Olympics, but before, right before the Olympics. And therefore she shouldn't even have qualified or participated in such Olympic events until there was an investigation in this positive doping test. However, because the test was not marked as priority by her own team, this sample was not provided priority testing and then that's when the whole mess occurred where we realized or the World Doping Federation and the IOC and the ISU and everybody involved realized that she was positive for doping and so they had to stall midway where we all found out right before the medal ceremony that never was, which was the team event at the Olympics where she participated and was a very big reason why the Russians had first, which is why we have another limbo and hellscape that is the fact that the Team USA who ended up in second place and Team Japan who ended up in third place to this day, two years later, still don't have their Olympic medals because of this situation. However, now there's been a decision, maybe, maybe not, the ISU has yet to say anything, they're supposed to say something tomorrow, they might be getting their medals. Whether they'll be first, second, or third, we don't know. Maybe Canada will even be on the podium they ended up fourth. Who knows? However, let's read this very succinct article from CNN just to get the gist of it and then we can read the actual press release from the Court of Arbitration for Sport, also known as CAS or CAS, because I think it tells a little bit more of the story than the media is saying and then we can review, recap, but it's just a lot to take in right now and uh, let's talk about my thoughts after. So, the long-running doping saga, you're telling me, involving Russian figure skater Kamila Valieva reached a landmark moment on Monday, today, as the 17-year-old was handed a four-year ban. In a statement, Switzerland's Court of Administration for Sports said that Camila Valieva had been found guilty of an anti-doping rule violation from her positive test ahead of the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. Finally, a verdict, and it is guilty. The ban is backdated to December 25th, 2021, which means she's already served three years of the ban. And how did she serve it? By being literally a hero in Russia, a patriotic symbol by probably reaching the climax of celebrity <laughs> during the Olympic times and has continued to maintain fame. That's how she's been serving this ban, which is now three years into it, only one left, which is when the sample was collected. And the highly anticipated decision was welcomed by anti-doping bodies around the world. The doping of children is unforgivable, the World Anti-Doping Agency WADA said in a statement. Doctors, coaches, and other supporting personnel, which were not investigated in this tribunal situation, who are found to have provided performance-enhancing substances to minors should face the full force of the World Anti- doping code. Valieva was only 15 when she tested positive for trimezidine, a heart medication we can boost endurance. Remember, she not only had trimezidine, she had three different heart medications in her system. It's just that trimezidine is the only one that was explicitly banned on the ban list by the IOC and the ISU and all these um, world anti-doping federations. And because she was 15, she was considered a protected person, which meant that she had to go through this trial and she was treated a little bit lighter. We'll get a little bit of back on that. The results of the test came to light after the figure skating team event at Beijing Winter Olympics, during which Camila Valieva had led the Russian Olympic Committee because they are not under their flag, they're under a neutral flag known as the Russian Olympic Committee because they have had so many banning things before and then this happened. To a first place finish ahead of the US in second and Japan in third, Canada meanwhile finished fourth. No medals have been subsequently awarded given the doping controversy but Monday's announcement from CAS is significant. The Swiss body said that the ban includes the disqualification of all competitive results and people 
people have been pointing to this wording saying that if they're disqualified, then that would mean that the US is first and Japan is second and Canada is third. However, things are not that easy because this was a team event. Meaning that Camila Valle was only a portion, a large portion, but only a portion of the reason why they got first place. And this complicates things because what are they gonna do? Are they just gonna take her points away? Are they just gonna take the entire team away? How do we decide this? And this is a task that has now been given to the IOC and the ISU. The Court of Arbitration for Sport really said, not my problem. After two years of the bare minimum, <laughs> they just said, you'll figure out part two. Achieved by Malieva sends the positive test. In its statement, CAS said that it has no scope to decide what will happen to the final standings of the team event. A responsibility that lies with the International Skating Union, and I believe at some point the IOC as well. Like, where even are these medals? I believe they would have to be with the IOC, right? The points Camila Valieva earned by competing at the 2022 Beijing Games have been disqualified through this decision, and it's imperative that the ISU immediately handles the technical processes needed to reallocate the medals accordingly, said Travis Tigard, CEO of the U.S. anti-doping agency, USADA. Then the rightful winners of the team figure skating event can celebrate their achievement and be recognized as the Olympic champions that they are. So you see the U.S. is already being like, we got Olympic champions on here. We don't know that yet. Of course, the moment to receive this recognition and the benefits that come from their sacrifice and hard work can never be replaced. It's gonna suck to get their medal in the mail, but at least they're gonna get it. Maybe, hopefully. On Monday, the ISU welcomed the decision from CAS and said it would publish a full statement with regards to the implications on Tuesday, meaning tomorrow. We got no statement right now. Meanwhile, Sarah Hirschland, the CEO of the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee, said the decision is a significant win, not only for Team USA athletes, but also for athletes around the world who practice fair play and advocate for clean sport. CNN reached out to the IOC, to the Japan Olympic Committee, and the Russian Olympic Committee for further comment. Nobody's responded. <laughs> it's taken almost two years of wrangling, that's the best word to describe this, of wrangling between various anti-doping bodies to reach what looks to be a conclusion from Camila Valieva's part of the test. The reason they say it seems to be is because there's still 30 days which Russia can appeal. I don't think they will, and I'll tell you why, because I think this is somehow trade. They've been allowed back into the fold of the Olympics. They're now allowed to compete at the Olympics under the neutral flag, of course, or maybe we don't know, under some different flag, who, who knows? And now this suddenly out of the blue decision when Camila Valleo happens, it's giving sacrificial lamb, it's giving tit for tat, it's giving we give you a four-year ban if you accept us into the Olympics. That's alleged, that's what I think. But anyways, but the ongoing uncertainty of the case means that the skaters from the US, Japan, and Canada are still in the dark waiting to see if their medals will be reallocated, according to the sporting group Global Athlete. Let's skip a little bit forward to see an information. In December 2022, a Russian anti-doping agency, Rosada Commission, said that Valieva bore no fault or negligence for the positive test from the previous year, while the skater has also said that the drug was ingested accidentally. Here's the thing, that was what Rusada and the Russian Federation were initially arguing, that it was completely unknown to her that it must have been some sort of accidental ingestion, that she had no idea, she had no clue, and I genuinely believe that she had no clue. However, I don't think it was accidental. I think there's some tomfoolery in the back, but we'll get into it later on. However, Rusada's ruling was appealed by the IOC and the ISU, and even a portion of the decision was appealed by Rusada itself. Because guess what? Rusada, Russia, has changed its initial stance and sought punishment now that may include or may be limited to a reprimand for Valieva. How interesting. <laughs> even with the latest news of Camila Valieva's ban, Alexander Kogan, the director of the General Russian Figure Skating Federation, said that he still views his athletes to be champions in the team event. So they give away Camila Valieva, but they don't want to give away the medals, which I don't know how the points turn out to be. I haven't done the math. I haven't looked back at the scores of the team event, but if you take away Camila's involvement, does it result in second place? Does it result in third or are they still in first? I don't know. It was difficult to expect an objective decision in the situation, said Kogan, on Monday according to the state news agency Ria Novosti. The Federation is not a party to the process. We received the information and it will be carefully analyzed. We believe that the Russian skaters are Olympic champions in the team competition. Russian athletes were competing under no flag as neutrals at the Winter Olympics in Beijing due to previous ban for doping non compliance, which began in 2014 after a state-sponsored, people always forget about that, state-sponsored doping that was confirmed. It was literally encouraged and enabled by the state. And then they're always so shocked when all these Russian figureheads and newscasters and just commenters in general are like, they are attacking us for no fault of our own. It's because it's ingrained. They, they have been doing this. It's state-sponsored. Allegedly, I'll keep saying that. In its Monday announcement, CIA said that the decision to ban Camila Valle before years is final and binding, explaining that the parties can appeal to the 
Swiss federal tribunal within 30 days on limited grounds. So it is final and binding. However, there is 30 days in which there is a tiny, 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 tiny chance that Russia will appeal because they have to appeal on some sort of grounds. They've already tried to prove that she did it accidentally through the weird grandfather water burping situation that she drank accidentally because she tried to say that her grandfather actually took the medication and she drank the same water as him and that somehow made it into her bloodstream along with three other i i'm sorry i cannot laugh when explaining that with three other heart medications well the explanation for those how many heart medications is your grandfather on and how much water was he drinking and then there was some other weird excuse where it was like oh maybe she knew but she didn't know exactly what it was here is my my theory is that the personnel the adults the doctor maybe somebody around her knew exactly what they were giving her because the fact that she was positive at the russian nationals is not a coincidence it was in russia where they probably were taking their daily vitamins that camila valieva just thought are her daily vitamins and because they were in russia they felt maybe a little too confident they got a little too big for their boots the rationing and the science and the algorithm did not algorithm that day and it turned out in a positive test or maybe they just weren't expecting a random testing at that specific competition who knows what happened but i genuinely believe that camila valieva did not know and that this is just common i won't say common practice but maybe a little bit common in certain high level athletes in Russia because the, I mean whether there's smoke there's fire why do you think Russia was there with a banned neutral flag it's because they've been caught before red handed time and time again so do I think Camila Valieva knew do I think the people around her knew some enough to not be surprised by this news but everybody it just keeps saying they're attacking us they're attacking us they're attacking us there just has to be consequences when you're caught red handed I am sorry and the most annoying thing is that Camila Valieva does not need. She's probably one of the most talented skaters we've seen this generation. She is the perfect blend, in my opinion, of artistic and athletic. And to ruin it for her by just giving her these drugs and just not considering the fact that this might ruin her career, it might leave a stain, which it has in her career, is so irresponsible of everyone around her, including her parents, her coach, her doctors. I don't know who knows. Maybe her parents didn't know. Maybe her coach didn't know. Maybe the doctor didn't know. I don't know who knew, but somebody knew. And no Nobody that actually was involved with the doing, I believe, or allegedly involved with the doing, was investigated. All that was investigated, all that was done here was for Camila Valiva trying to prove that she did it accidentally, that she didn't know. And so they had to pull out of thin air some sort of excuse because they can't say, oh, I took my vitamins that so-and-so gives me every day. Well, then so-and-so is going to get in trouble. See what I'm saying? Anyways, let's read the actual press statement, which tells us a little bit more than the general media, which just says four-year ban and doesn't really explain how this is basically a slap on the wrist <laughs> because like I said she's already completed three years of that. <laughs> The Court of Arbitration for Sport has issued its decision in the appeal arbitration procedures, blah, 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 blah. The most important bullet point here is Ms. Valieva is found to have committed an anti-doping rule violation, ADRV, under Clause 4.1 of all Russian anti-doping rules. So basically, even the Rusada rule she broke, and Rusada now agrees that she did. In the beginning, they were very defensive. They were like, no, it was accidental, accidental, accidental. And I knew they were going to fight till the very end. And I think the end was them being accepted back into the fold. Because the true ban that was given to Camila Valieva was not even because of the doping. It was a countrywide ban because of the war. Is the entire ban that was given to Russia, which wasn't even given directly to her, but that is truly the only consequence and punishment that she has received in her career after this occurred. And again, it wasn't directed at her. It wasn't intended for her. It just happened. If the war had not happened, Camila Valieva would be competing like nothing ever happened. And any medal that she would have won internationally would have been then brought into question, would have had to been taken away after this and any other winner that had been bumped out of the podium would have also have to not received medals like team usa and team japan until there was a decision made which would have been two years later do you know how crazy that is <laughs> like she would have just been knocking people out of medals wherever she went but because she was stuck in russia and in russia i don't even think any of these quote-unquote consequences will affect her because we're gonna read some of these consequences i don't think they can apply them at all in russia no way
Let me keep reading. You'll get what I mean. According to clause 4.1, which means that she basically did doping of the Russian ADR, athletes are responsible, not the personnel, not the adults around her, but the athlete, Camila Valieva, is responsible for any prohibited substance found to be present in their samples. And the presence of any prohibited substances amount to an ADRV. Basically, there was enough trimestidine in her system that this is a positive test. It is a violation of anti-doping rules. In this matter, a prohibited substance Trimesidine, which is in short TMZ, which I think is so perfect. Like TMZ, the news station is messy. Trimesidine is messy. It's, it's perfection. Was found to be present in the sample collected from Miss Valieva on the 25th of December of 2021 during the Russian National Championship in St. Petersburg. Again, red flag. Miss Valieva did not contest the liability in that she accepted that by reason of the presence of TMZ in her sample, she had committed an ADRV under clause 4.1 of the Russian ADR. Basically meaning that Camila Valieva was not contesting the fact that the sample was positive. She admitted to that. She said, yes, it's positive. However, I am innocent because I don't know how that happened. It must have been an accident. Let me prove my innocence. And the result is she could not prove it sufficiently. It was therefore a matter for the CAS panel to consider what sanctions, if any, should be imposed on Ms. Valieva pursuant to the Russian ADR, bearing in mind that in the absence of the grounds for elimination, reduction, or suspension, the Russian ADR provide for a four-year period of an eligibility. Meaning, <laughs> this is the part that is so wild to think about, that no matter what, if you are found to violate this rule, the punishment is a four-year ban. But because, and we'll get in the next line, Camila Valieva was a protected person at the time. She could appeal this process and she was giving a lighter sentence. And that is truly the only reason why she was lifted from the ban temporarily and allowed to compete in the individual event. Mind you, they knew full well that if she qualified, if she got third, second or first, the entire medal ceremony could not be done with medals because Camila Valieva would be again in limbo. So the fact is they even allowed her to participate is insane to me after seeing the mess, the debacle, the debauchery that was the team event that couldn't celebrate their medals. They were willing to do that, to risk that for the individual event because Russia was so confident and has so much freaking pool power with the IOC that they said, lift the freaking ban. This is our star child and we need to see her in that solo individual women's ladies event and they did and the little 15 year old crumbled under the pressure and did not make it to the podium she got fourth i believe and this means now that that title is taken away is disqualified and whoever was below her which i don't remember who it was is now in fourth place which is crazy but isn't that insane <laughs> like if she was only 16 there wouldn't have been all that brouhaha maybe yes we don't know the russian pool but because she was 15 it was even more dramatic and more a mess is the best way that I would say it. And even then, they still allowed her to, to participate. I would just be thinking about the other skaters and like, t take her out of it. She's just a 15 year old child. It's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be a circus of media and stuff. And I know it's her dream, but like then the other skaters and then she did it. And ugh, I don't know. Let's keep reading. In order to benefit from a reduced period of ineligibility, Ms. Valieva needed to prove by a balance of probabilities that she had not intentionally committed to a ADRV, again, an anti doping rule violation, by engaging in a conduct which she knew constituted an ADRV or in a conduct where she knew that there was significant risk that said conduct might constitute or result in an ADRV and had manifestly disregarded that risk. Meaning, did she know? Was she aware at all, even if it was in the slightest bit, that she was putting things in her system that could have been banned? And this is where I think the waters are a little bit muddied because in my head, in my theory, is that she is given her quote-unquote vitamins by her team or is just told drink this powder or shake or use this or use that by her coach, her team, her personal trainer, whoever it might be. And she just says, yes, sir, because that is the culture in Russia. That is the culture in her camp. Remember, she's a, a dairy girl. It's yes, sir, jump, how high? That is the attitude. And if anyone in a position of power that tells her, you want to win Olympic gold, you need to do this, I feel like this girl would do it without even knowing what she is putting her body to. And alleged, 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 I don't know anything, but that's what I feel. And so how do you prove that you're innocent without throwing your entire team and country under the bus. But well, this was probably how you got a positive doping test. There is that. 
Let's keep reading. <clears throat> Having carefully considered all evidence put before it, the CAS panel concluded that Ms. Valieva was not able to establish on the balance of probabilities and on the basis of evidence before the panel that she had not committed an ADAVAR intentionally with the meaning of the Russian ADR. Meaning that she was found to have known to some level that she was putting herself at the risk of having a positive sample, which you would think implicates somebody around her, but they're sticking to the grandpa water excuse. <laughs> so you you can't really go after the grandpa for using our medication, can you? So there's that. The CAS panel stressed that the test with respect to intention under clause 2.2 of the Russian ADR is one in the same whether the athlete is an adult or a protected person. Bam! Therefore, it means that if a protected person fails to discharge the burden, which under the Russian ADR is born to the athlete, it's Camila Valieva's responsibility to know what goes in her body, that he or she did not commit an ADRV intentionally. There is no basis under the rules to treat them any differently from an adult athlete. All that to say that because she couldn't prove that she wasn't aware and it was completely accidental, she has been given the adult treatment, which is a four-year ban. Mind you, when this began, Camila Valle was 15. She is 17 now. <laughs> she is an adult. So yes, it's redundant. And she did turn 16 only a few months later while meeting Putin. The irony upon all ironies is just, it's just, they keep piling up. But she is now being given the adult treatment. And that was a point that I wanted to stress because it was a big point of contention during the Olympics where they were saying, but she's only 15, she's a protected person. We can't treat her like an adult. We can't just ban her. We can't just pull her out of the competition. And people were saying, listen, if you're gonna allow 15 year olds to be senior and compete with 20 year olds and other adult people and, and be in adult events, senior events, then you have to treat them like senior people, like adult people. And well, now they are, but plot twist, it's two years later and she's already an adult. So <clears throat> in the end, I don't even know if anything was done. Like I said, this feels like a slap on the wrist. I'll get into it a little bit further. Anyways, accordingly, since it was determined that there was no scope for the exercise of discretion to reduce the period of ineligibility, a four-year period of ineligibility was imposed by the panel. So she was giving the punishment that is said by the book. For your ban, for your ban. Done. But the ban begins the day that the positive test was enacted. The period of ineligibility starts on the 25th December of 2021. That means we've already gone through three of those freaking years, <laughs> literally. And it ends on December 25th of 2025. And any period of provisional suspension served by Ms. Valieva is to be credited against the period of ineligibility. So she served the majority of it. The CAS panel also ordered this qualification of all competitive results achieved by Ms. Valieva from the 25th of December of 2021 with all resulting consequences, including the forfeiture of any titles, awards, medals, profits, prices, and appearance of money. Now hear me out. I don't think they can honestly apply any of these consequences to her. And I honestly don't think it will make a difference. So titles. The only titles that she has is Russian national national champion that's taken away okay whatever she's basically been that before and has been that ever since has been winning the national championship ever since only bested by Adelia Petrosian who is a new up and coming Eteri girl medals all most of her medals were won before that she had a very short senior career in international competition so she didn't even get to win that many medals before the whole mess profits prices and appearance money how the hell they're gonna enact <laughs> that in Russia in Russia that that's not gonna happen she's gonna keep her appearance money she's probably gonna get paid more now because this news only benefits her because she's such a patriotic symbol. She is the star. People there already introduce her as Olympic champion because she's so famous. They don't even know. They just know she's a famous figure skater. It's kind of like when they had introduced Adam Rippon as Olympic champion. People just know they're they're famous and they're an Olympian. That means they must have won. And that is the same treatment that Camila Valieva was given, but even bigger, even larger, because at a time where Russia felt like it was them against the world, because it basically was, Camila Valieva became a patriotic symbol, which is probably the strong Longest symbol you can be in order to endear a general public to you. Like people ride or die hard for Camila Valieva. And this news is only probably gonna make her appearance money skyrocket. We'll talk about some of the responses that have been already out there. It, the typical response you would think, which is the whole world is against us. Why do they think Camila is guilty? They're attacking a young girl. And it's so hard to explain how I feel because I am happy that Camila Valieva is living her best life. She should. I think she truly is the best talent that we had during her generation. What pisses me off is that she was not allowed to explore that talent because of the meddling of the adults around her because they couldn't just trust the talent. They can't stop. It's a compulsion. They can't stop the doping. They're still gonna be at the Olympics under a neutral flag. That's how much they've doped. State-sponsored people. And the fact that we're never ever gonna know the reality why and how and if it's still going on, whoever gave her this medicine, is it going into other skaters? Are they 
great taking it, but they haven't been caught. If one has positive doping, what about the rest of the team? You see what I'm saying? Like it, it just, so many questions are gonna be unanswered because the only investigation and the only point that was being fought for is that Camila Valleva didn't know and then they couldn't explain the logistics of why she didn't know because they can't throw their own country and team and doctor and federation under the bus, allegedly. Ah, oh, Lordy Lord. Like there has to be consequences to actions, especially when you have been so blatantly caught time and time again. I'm talking to Russia as a country now. And it's just sad that it has to be via Camila Valieva, who I genuinely, I choose to believe, did not know that she was taking a banned substance because it's probably come in practice around her. Allegedly, I don't know anything, but it just feels that way. And the fact that this investigation is not gonna hold who I believe to be accountable or is probably accountable is very frustrating. Don't take this as an attack on Camila Valieva, but I am happy that there finally came a decision and that it's a logical one. Like people truly were like, why Camila Valieva, why go after her? Well, because if you're caught with a positive test, then you get a ban. Two plus two is four. Like you have to follow certain protocol. We can't just be wildly Delulu right now. But anyways, let me keep reading. I'm just ranting now. It just sucks because I want these consequences to be given, but at the same time, I feel like the consequence is not hard enough, but I feel like an asshole saying that she, but Camila Valieva should have a harsher consequence because she already basically missed out on her entire senior career, but that wasn't a ban on her, it was a ban on the country. And then again, the country is not being punished enough. They're just, their flag is taken away and then they have a cool nickname. The Russian Olympic Committee, rock, we will rock you is their literal hashtag. Like, I don't know. The consequences linked to the retroactive disqualification of Ismarieva from past events, including the Olympic Winter Games, Beijing 2022, were not within the scope of this arbitration procedure and will have to be examined by the sports organization's concern. Meaning ISU, you do that. IOC, you do that. <laughs> you ship the medals and you hand out any other updates to your rankings, titles, will not hand out, I guess, take away any titles, rankings, etc. The arbitral award issued blah, 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 blah. The main thing here is at the end the statement by saying the CS panel's decision is final and binding with the exception of the party's right to file an appeal to the Swiss federal tribunal within 30 days on limited grounds. I don't think they will appeal. I think that is exactly what they wanted. They're getting a slap on the wrist. She's basically served her three, the majority of her sentence in like the best of conditions. Yes, she's banned, but so is the rest of her com main competitors. So it's not like she's missing out on that much. It sucks that we're not seeing this artist in her prime at international competitions, but that is a larger conversation because the reason we're not seeing her is because of a larger political issue. And I just hate that this is a stain on her career, but it's not even really a stain because in Russia, it just has propelled her to superstardom and she is set for life. She is set for life and all that appearance money and all those titles that she won in Russia during the fake Grand Prix and even maybe the Russian National Championship, the ISU might take it away, but she'll keep it. She will keep it in the eyes of the Russian public. And Camila Valieva deserves to have a consequence, but so do the people around her. <laughs> and it's so annoying. <laughs> Lord, this is funny. So the ISU has yet to say anything. They say that they will have a statement tomorrow, but <laughs> Christine Brennan, who is a very prolific figure skating reporter, her response to the ISU's generic ass statement is hilarious. So the ISU's generic statement response to this news says, the ISU welcomes the decision of CAS and firmly maintains its position that the protection of clean athletes and the fight against doping are of the highest priority and will persist in the ongoing effort to uphold the integrity of fair competition and the well-being of athletes. The ISU will publish a full statement with regards to the implications of this decision on January 30th, 2024, meaning they will give us some clearer direction as to what's gonna happen to the medals, the titles, the rankings, etc. And Christine Brennan's response is, the ISU finally breaks its silence with no information about the 2022 Olympic team figure skating medals. Says it will tell us tomorrow. Apparently two years wasn't enough. Unbelievable. Total amateur hour. Which I get your frustration. I somewhat agree. The ISU is a glacial pace federation but at least they're giving us some sort of statement tomorrow i do predict it'll be just as generic as this one and it'll probably just be like we stand with our athletes we stand with clean sport and we will begin any action needed to work along the ioc and get you your medals however you might have to wait 30 days for the appeal process window to close <laughs> like i feel like that's what's gonna say and it's gonna be very very anti-climax i doubt that they're gonna be like the medals are ready to be shipped they're engraved we're ready to go and we're holding a 
press conference the minute y'all get it. I hope they do, honestly. I hope they have a cool photo shoot together and they get to go back on Good Morning America and it's like a feel-good story or something. And the same for the Japanese team and maybe even the Canadian team. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening there. But it's just a mess, you guys. We got finally got a decision out of the blue. It feels like the ISU had no idea this was happening and just like put out a chat GPT response. And I feel like now they're all just talking to Switzerland and the IOC and the headquarters trying to be like, where are the medals? Who has the medals? Uh, let's ship them out, put them in individual boxes. Like what's happening? <laughs> oh wait, who's doing the recalculation? What are we doing about the recalculation? Are we taking out the entire team or just the individual? Like what are we doing? And whatever happens, Russia is not take, getting that medal taken away from them. I think what's gonna happen is either they're gonna duplicate, they're just gonna make two sets of gold medals if they decide to move the USA team up or they are just gonna take Kamina Malieva away and recalculate the points and then just redistribute medals however that turns out to be. But it, it's not great. Something that is very interesting is the responses that we have been getting from different figure skaters and figureheads and everything. Kamina Malieva has yet to respond. I've been on her Instagram, nothing yet. But one of the most surprising responses to me that I was not expecting at all, but maybe I should have because she's so vocal, is from the love of my life, Evgenia Medvedeva. She decided to post a long statement that I have some umbrage with. I, I, I don't know if I fully agree with her point. The girls are fighting, let's see. She says, today the sport arbitration for sp the court arbitration for sport disqualified Camila Valieva for four years starting December 25th, 2021 and deprived of all medals won since that same date. It's a sad decision, but we're already accustomed to being sad in Russian sport. Whatever I think about this, I can tell Camila in person, but I would like to say a few thoughts in public. Okay, random, but okay. I was by Camila Valieva in China when this all happened. It was nearby even at the end of the games when we flew in neighboring chairs on a plane to Moscow from China. I saw all the emotions and from and before. So basically she saw Camila Oliva go through probably the worst time of her life and anxiety that I cannot even imagine, which is why I'm like, why did they let this 15 year old keep going through it? This just tornado of chaos. But anyways, I remember how much she was worried and upset at the time, not understanding what was going on. This is not how an athlete who purposely used doping behaves. And this is the point I think she's missing. Missing. The court of arbitration report did not say that Camila Valieva intentionally, maliciously used doping. The way that they describe it is that Camila Valieva put herself in a position where she was at risk of having a positive sample and did that knowing because she might have ingested something that she didn't know exactly what it was. Here's the thing. Athletes have to report anything they take, whether it's like ibuprofen, whether it's just like any type of medicine, you have to report it. And there is a list that you can check on anytime in the internet. So if at any any point you put something in your mouth that you do not know what it is, you are putting yourself at risk of being on that positive doping test and having a banned substance in your body. And that is what she was found guilty of, of not being truly diligent with what goes into her system. And that's why she got the results that she did. They did not say Camila Valieva purposely took doping. That was not the result. The result was that she put herself in a position where she couldn't say 120% there is nothing in my system that is, you know, a banned substance. And if there is I can explain why and then she couldn't explain why so that's what happened but Evgenia continues saying he this is a bad translation she will be angry that everything that came out to look for the guilty ones but Camilla but Camila just didn't understand what was going on imagine chasing Olympic gold all of your life and then you arrive okay we're projecting now imagine chasing Olympic gold all of your life and then you arrived at it as a favorite we're fully projecting now are you ready to win and they tell you you can perform but we will probably deprive you of the medals afterwards because you are 15 years old. I don't know if there's a tra mistranslation or what, but there's three things you gotta contest there. One, yes, she was ready to win, but she already knew that she was positive by that point if you're talking about the individual event. So that was a risk that she was willing to take and she decided to take it. And then two, if you do get there, they did have to deprive her of the medals because it was a positive. So like, n imagine they tell you that. Yeah, imagine you show up to the Olympic and then you have a positive doping test. That's, that's what we should be imagining. But I have a lot of questions about this story. <laughs> oh God. Why did the story with Termesidine surface a couple days before the Olympic performance. Well, because your team, Team Tutberitze, did not mark it as priority. This was not like some sort of, nobody's trying to blackmail Camila Valieva. Nobody's trying to, nobody's saying to Tanya Harding her. Like nobody's trying to purposely make her fail. What? Like why, why would anyone do that to her? The only people who could be able to do that are your team. The IOC, a random employee at the IOC is not going to do that. Or like at Rusada. If it was already known in December of 2021, literally anyone who could have marked it a priority is Russian. Why would they do that to Camila Valieva? Like this, this logic is not logic. How could a decision be made after the Olympics for two years. Girl, we're asking 
ourselves all of that? Why did it take two years? I don't know. <laughs> a whole lot of red tape. Yeah, a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions here, but not the right ones, my girl. And why does a skater need doping anyway? Oh no, not the poop and wrist spots. I understand track and field, skiing and biathlon, that is, long distance athletes, but figure skaters? What medicine can help jump a quadruple toe loop? Maybe you could share a recipe with me. I can't, but I can think of a few people in Russia that might. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Evgenia, Evgenia, no, girl. I love you so much. Why are you, why are you hurting? Um, okay, so, yes, you can dope in figure skating. We need to put, we need to get that out of the way. Putin said it first, and now it's freaking spreading. When she went to meet with Putin, Putin said, what you and I, Camila, know is that you can't even dope in figure skating because figure skating is a sport of beauty. What? <laughs> and now Evgenia is saying a little bit adjacent of a statement saying, I can understand other sports, other real sports that require muscle like people think doping is like testosterone and like bulking up. No, doping is any medicine that gives you a heightened or enhanced ability that you wouldn't otherwise have. And if it's on the ban list, it's because it has been proven to enhance results. In figure skating, you need, you need to have endurance. You need to be strong for those five minute programs, the long program specifically, but even the short program, you need to have just high endurance. And the way you can do that is by pumping more blood into your heart, which is what these heart medicines do when you don't need them. Therefore, it is doping, my love. It is doping because you are getting a skill, a one-up on other people that if maybe they had the medicine, they would be able to match you or even beat. But because only you have the medicine, you can match them and beat them. See what I'm saying? And so I hate this concept that you can't dope in figure skating. Yes, she's a talented individual, which is why I'm so angry because she would have beat everybody there without the medicine. But here we are. Somebody gave it to her and the questions you should be asking is why? Why did someone give this to her who thought it should be so easy and so common and so part of the culture that Camila Valieva is unknowingly taking trimezidine and putting it into her system because somebody is just telling her put this in take this in this will make you jump quicker or last longer or whatever and maybe they're not even phrasing it that way maybe it's just like this is vitamin c <laughs> like take it but those are the questions we need to be asking not how can you dope in figure skating can you even dope in figure skating yes you can the answer is yes if there's a ban list there's a ban list punto y final done i can say with confidence that camila valleva didn't know anything about trimezidine and that is not what we're debating about i believe you i genuinely think she didn't i am very sorry that an athlete who was not made any mistakes is purposely deprived of medals. She did make the mistake of putting medicines in her body that she did not know 110% were clean, meaning not on the ban list. That is sadly a mistake that she did make, maybe not by her own volition, but there is a mistake that was done. I am very sorry that an athlete who has not made any mistakes is purposely deprived of medals. I could cite dozens of examples of our international athletes, basically anyone that is not Russian, being justified in similar situations but I won't. The only one I can think of is a girl who put on like mascara and then it got out that she had some sort of banned substance because she touched her eyelashes and then it turns out they tested the mascara and that was truly provable and evidence like supporting logic that they could test and show the panel and then her medal was given back to her but that took like three years or like two years something like that. But so I don't know many many situations but honestly I wish you didn't list them. I would love to google but I won't. Okay, sass. Gonna save the strength to hug Camila tight when we see each other. P.S. Camila, I want you to just smile like in this photo. I love you. So, I'm not a therapist, but what I think is happening here is that wounds have been reopened. Evgenia Medvedeva in 2018 was the girl with a traumatic storyline. With a traumatic moment, event. It wasn't a storyline. It happened to her. It was real. And so, seeing Camila Valieva now be the girl in 2022 with the dramatic storyline, with the favorite to win it all. I mean, I could link... <laughs> My Olympic favorite curse video right here, right now. Literally, it goes Yuna, you, and by you, I mean Genia, and then Camila Valieva. This is what's happening. Wounds are being opened. She is seeing her stories, her wounds, her, her deepest emotional triggers occurring in Camila Valieva once more. The Olympics is a touchy subject, and it obviously a trigger for Evgenia Medvedeva, and I think seeing, firsthand seeing Camila Valieva go through this roller coaster of emotions that she probably went through as well is, is horrible. And so now she feels like she has to make a statement because she probably wishes that somebody had stood up for her because girl we can remember that not a lot of people in russia stood up for you when you try to stand up for yourself do you remember
remember that? Do you remember that when you went to Canada and everybody lost their damn minds and called you a traitor to the country? Well, I feel like now she's trying to be that person that is standing up for Camila Valieva. And again, I'm not attacking Camila Valieva. The consequences sadly can only be given to her because it was her positive doping test, even though I believe it should be extended to other individuals. But this is where we are. This is what the Court of Arbitration for Sport was debating on. And it was only Camila Valieva's name that was put on that list. So here we are. So if you can imagine the rest of the figureheads in Russia are doing the same thing where they're just saying that somebody, I don't even know who it is, said scoundrels and lawless people, of course, an appeal must be filed against this decision. You have to fight scum using their own methods. There are more crazy quotes from Russians saying CAS has rendered a decision unprecedented in its cruelty. Camila is a unique athlete. She did not deserve such punishment, becoming a victim of a bureaucratic machine. I do think she's a victim of a bureaucratic machine. Maybe not the same machine we're thinking of though. She's definitely a victim though. Definitely a victim of the system that I believe was never allowed to thrive because of external factors. But one thing that I we need to talk about is Camila Valieva in the 2026 Olympics because I know what you're thinking now. You're like, what do you mean? Of course she's not going to be at the 2026 Olympics because, well, one, she is reaching the Terry expiration date. The window is closing in the supposed famed notorious Terry expiration date and Adele Petrosian has seemed to have risen to take that position as the main chance for the 2026 Olympics. But also the ban extends to December of 2025, which means that she would probably not be able to qualify for the Olympics. But technically, <laughs> she could go for some other flag, some other country. Maybe she could even go for Russia if they have no other prospects. And they're like, well, Camila Valle wants to go. We can throw her in here. 2026 is going to be a mess. And I genuinely don't want Camila Valieva to be another hurricane of chaos of media circus at another Olympics. But I wouldn't put anything past Russia. I genuinely think there's like a 0.01 chance that she would be at the Olympics as a skater representing Russia or the neutral flag of Russia, whatever it might be. But 2026, the ban is lifted. And it is the 2026 Olympics. So, And again, Russians are not allowed into international competition. So I don't even know how they're qualified. Qualifying. Is anyone really gonna make Camila Valieva stop skating in Russia? <laughs> like, you see what I'm saying? There is still a slight little chance that Camila Valieva could still be competing in competitions in Russia. And the Russians are like, hey, if we're allowed by any rule to send Camila Valieva, we think that we should because she deserves another chance at the Olympics. However, will Camila Valieva want to go again? I don't know. The amount of anxiety that she already overcame and the amount of anxiety that being at another Olympics might cause her, let alone the pandemonium that will be around her media-wise, I don't think I would want to be in the middle of that and she already has gotten any fruits that she could get out of an olympic appearance you know what i'm saying like she already is being treated like the olympic champion so what would she truly be getting out of it professionally like career-wise besides a medal maybe she's more competitive than i think maybe she will try tooth and nail to go with any loophole that she can and maybe russia is able to send her i don't know how i don't know how you can be so brash to try and do that but i feel like if camila Gavaliva truly wants to there is a chance that she could go <laughs> which would be so insane and you know what it wouldn't even surprise me because every Olympics has just been one horrifying moment after the next. The Olympic favorite curse is continuing and although I don't think she would go into the next Olympics and every Olympics has one bombshell moment if Camila Valieva goes that could be the one. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. Guys, it is the next day and everything is happening. Literally minutes ago, Terry Tupiritsa posted a statement on the situation. The ISU has released their placements, which has made Canada very angry. And we need to talk about all of it because it feels like by the minute, things are just happening. And I just need to talk about it right now before anything crazier happens, because I need to put this video out. And I also want to know what you guys think. So first things first, the ISU did complete their promise and put out a statement, which explains specifically with freaking math that I don't understand. So explain to me why the placements are the placements that they are and the results are in ladies and gentlemen and the USA is now Olympic team champions. I am not surprised I saw this coming this fits perfectly into the narrative of Russia being like the USA did this to us on purpose it was all a ploy to take us down they are taking away our medals the only reason Camila was found positive for doping was to take down the entire team which I still think is a crazy theory like I genuinely don't think that Camila Valieva was oh my god I keep forgetting the word but I don't think so, nobody tried to trip Camila Valieva I don't think anyone again the only person who could have done that would have been a Russian the sample was tested in Russia <laughs> like, I don't think anyone would have messed up Camila Valieva's doping sample just so that USA could win that's just not true in second place we have Japan so Japan is now a silver medalist go moving on up that is a big jump from bronze to silver so 
So yay, Japan. Japan is honestly just here being like, y'all fight, we chill. <laughs> and then in third place, the Russian Olympic Committee. So they weren't fully disqualified, only Camila's points were disqualified. And through the doing of the math, that means that Russia goes from first to third, which is honestly what I thought would happen. I thought that Camila's points were enough to put them in first place, but I don't think if being taken away, they would have been kicked off completely off the podium. They still had a pretty strong team in Camila Baliva being the strongest link there. But because people heard disqualification, everybody thought that Russia was going to be taken out completely and that Canada was possibly going to get a medal. And the Canadians are not happy. They put out a statement saying, Skate Canada is extremely disappointed with International Skating Union's position on the long-awaited, two years awaited, awarding of medals for the 2022 Beijing Olympic Games figure skating team competition. The Court of Arbitration for Sports, CAS, ruled that in addition to a four-year ban from the competition, the ban includes the disqualification of all competitive results. But that's specifically what Camila Valieva, I believe, achieved by the Russian figure skater Camila Valieva, exactly, since the positive test. The ISU, in its recent decision not to apply Rule 353, oh shit, they're bringing out rules, which states that the competitors having finished the competition and who initially placed lower than the disqualified competitors will move up accordingly in their placement. Skate Canada strongly disagrees with the ISU's position on this matter and will consider all options to appeal this decision. Wait a damn minute! Okay, wait, wait, wait. If they appeal, it would be the ISU, not the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Okay, thank God, okay. I don't want anyone appealing the decision that was said to be final and binding. That is done. We need we need this saga of the Court of Arbitration Report to be put to an end. However, appealing the ISU, sure, go ahead, do that. But don't, because I feel like these medals just need to be received. Stop it. I think we should just give out these medals. It has been two years. I need them all to just get medals. They need to get their medals. And yes, I guess it is important to note who should get what medal. But I don't know, I feel, am I, am I in the wrong here? I feel like I agree with the placements. I thought this was exactly what was going to happen. I did not see Russia losing out on any medals. I honestly, even predicted they would go as far as keeping the first place medals and then just awarding a second pair of first place medals to the Team USA. They've done it before. But moving, shifting the medals in there. Yeah, like it seems all right to me. Maybe the math is effed up. Somebody check out the math. Apparently, Chrissy Brennan <laughs> was not happy with the math. Her latest tweet says, it has been well over 24 hours, 26 and a half to be exact. SAS is at 100. And still nothing from the International Skating Union explaining what role it used to put Russia ahead of Canada for the 2022 Olympic team figure skating bronze medal. Total silence. Am I the minority here? I genuinely wouldn't think that Camila had that much of an impact to take them from fourth to first, but from third to first? That seems logical to me. I don't know. But you know what? The real breaking news is the fact that mere minutes ago, Eteri Tupirite posted. She posted! She saw that Evgenia posted, she saw that everybody else was posting. I've seen crazy things of Russian posting pictures of like, it is always black athletes, which I, I don't want to get into that, but it is always people like Simone Biles and, and Serena Williams or Venus Williams who have all these muscles and then posting them side by side with Camila Valieva being like, yeah, because they don't dope. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, how is that evidence of anything? Like, they got muscles. Okay. <laughs> and it's always, like I said, these black athletes, it's really weirdly coded, but there's a lot of, from what I see in the media, a lot lot of stigma and notion in Russia that if you don't have muscles, you can't be doping, which is just not true. Can we just agree on that? But anyways, let's read Tutberis' statement, all right? It has nothing to do with the Williams sisters and Simone Biles, but I've been seeing that a lot and I don't like it. It feels weird. All right, so Atari Tutberis has spoken. She says, for two years now, I have not commented on the doping situation discovered by Camila Valieva at the Championship of Russia in 2021, despite underserved endless hate and accusations on our side. Our entire team has been strictly prohibited from commenting, ooh, I did not know that, or evaluating what is happening as it may affect and interfere with the investigation. All right, that makes sense. And I probably wanted most of all that this story would be thoroughly investigated and that I would be left with no questions, even if it was a mistake, that makes no sense, a mistake or a crime by somebody else. Oh, so she is mad that nobody else got thrown under the bus because people are accusing her of being the, the sorceress behind the scenes who might have gotten hands on some doping, but she says it is not me and I wish somebody else would have been found out for it. Interesting. For many years I have been working sometimes without weekends or holidays for the results of athletes and I, like no one else, want to know what happened to Camila and how that draw got into her body. Girl, if you don't know, then we don't know. I don't know. Oh, my athletes were and remain clean. I am for clean sport. There is no other way. Our athletes have been competing in international competitions since 2010. Okay. And it will probably be impossible 
impossible to count the number of doping samples that have been submitted during this time. The samples have always been clean. I hope it stays that way. We have always taught and explained to our athletes and their parents, ooh, a little shade to the parents, that you need to be more careful when taking even the simplest medicine for colds and that you can't trust, unfortunately, absolutely no one. Is she accusing someone of giving her drugs without Camila knowing? Because that would be insane. And after two years, nothing became clear. The origin of this drug was not investigated. And I agree with her. It was not investigated, the origin of the drug. I need to know who gave it to her. So there were a lot of questions left and only accusations from different sides fly in our direction. She said, I am fed up of being told that I was the one who gave her something to make her have a positive sample. It was not me. And I am mad that this investigation was not more about trying to find the root of the problem. And I agree with her. I need to know what happened. I need to know, I need people to trace it back. How did she get this? I have no questions about Camila. She is a child and I will continue to support her in any way possible. No offense to all my previous athletes. Camila is the most gifted athlete. I love that. <laughs> I love that. You know why? Because she's done that before. Every time there's an interview and they're like, so have you ever gotten close to an athlete? She says, no offense to all my other athletes, but if Kenya Mavierva. And now she's saying that no offense to my other athletes, but Camila Valieva is the most talented. And I agree with her. And her athletic share faced a challenge that is difficult to describe in words. Regarding the verdict, I have one main question. At least someone defended Camila at the hearings because the verdict couldn't have been worse. Camila's story is our pain. Well, well, well. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with a territory to a point. I agree that this investigation was lacking in the fact that they had no interest, and I mean no interest, in trying to figure out truly how that doping sample became positive. All that was done was Camila Valieva came with her plausible excuse. How does drug get in your body? She said, I think it's because my grandpa takes the medicine and then I drank it from a cup and I think that's why. And they were like, that is not scientifically possible, therefore you're guilty. Boom, done. Imagine that in the span of two years. But instead, what we have is a child who I genuinely, in my heart of hearts, believe does not know how this happened. Apparently, a coach that does not know how this happened. I am a little more skeptical of a Sarah Tudor said not knowing how and who might have been involved in there because this feels like she's throwing a little bit of shade to someone. She's saying you can't trust anyone in this sport. There is somebody else. She's basically saying I am fed up of people looking at me, acting like I was the one who possibly gave her something, some sort of vitamin or, or whatever, when in reality, it probably was some other adult in her life and she did mention the parents But maybe it could be some other adult. like it could be freaking an aunt for all that we know like somebody and that is I believe Irrefutable somebody in her life gave her tremesidine like it was in her system So we need to stop acting like this did not happen. It did. Can we all agree on that? There was tremesidine in her system plus three other heart medications, okay? So somebody was giving her significant amounts for it to show up in a random doping test So that is one two somebody was giving it to her unknowing. That is what I believe. Like, not that the person didn't know, but that Camila did not know. And now a Terry's saying, I didn't know either. And I am mad because I keep telling my athletes they need to be very careful what you put in your body. And somebody gave this child a substance that was banned and they did not know it was banned or maybe they didn't measure it correctly for it to not show up in the system. And I agree that the investigation should have been more thorough in terms of actually trying to trace back what happened. But if the child says, the only way this got into my body is because grandma burped into a cup and I drank it and she will offer no other explanations, how are you meant to investigate? Because nobody else is going to talk. Like, do you really think if they showed up to the entirety of Team Tutberitza and they interviewed everyone and they interviewed her parents and they interviewed her brothers, if she has any, or her sister, and they interviewed freaking her teachers, any adult in her life, hell, her friends, do you really think anyone would have said anything? No. So if Camila doesn't know and the adult in her life who gave her this medicine is not telling her, how would the court of arbitration for sport really get down to it? It's this culture of secrecy and this culture of normalcy with drugs that Russia has been shooting itself in the foot with. Because let's not forget, they are still participating under a neutral flag. And why is that? Because it has been proving time and time and time again, multiple occasions across different sports, that they have dote. Because something they keep saying, even if Kenya said, is that I can understand in other sports like track. Why track? Because track athletes from Russia have already been found guilty. And even in those circumstances, they still pleaded their innocence. But then what ended up happening is that they discovered that the athletes, as part of their normal routine as athletes, were given medicine that was banned. Hell, shady doctor, Dr. Chevetsky, was banned in 2008 or 2007, I forget the exact year, for doing doping through blood transfusions. Blood transfusions. And he accepted that he was guilty. It is part of the culture that is undeniable 
undeniable. And there was tremendous in her blood system that is undeniable. But I agree with the theory to put it to that the investigation should have had a little bit more of an incentive, a little bit more dedication in figuring out why and how this got into her system. And you know what is kind of sad is that I think they probably have an inkling. If there was two years of investigating, they probably have an idea of how this drug got into her system. But they can't make accusations. They're a court of arbitration for sports. So unless there is hard evidence and they're trying to find someone guilty, they're not going to put out a statement saying, also, there is a possibility that the drug was administered by so-and-so. They're not going to say that because they need to have hard facts and then give a punishment. They probably have an inkling and they can't say anything. And I'm sure Camila Valleva probably now at this point has an inkling because she can think of anyone who's ever giving her any medicine. But in her head, everything has been pre-approved. The only thing the Court of Arbitration for Sport was tasked with doing is seeing if Camila Valleva had taken purposefully or had put herself in a situation where she was risking putting something within her body that could have been banned because she didn't have full knowledge of what she was putting on her body. And that's what she was guilty of. She was found guilty of knowing she was putting herself in a risky situation by taking medicine or taking substances that she wasn't 100% sure were safe. And people keep forgetting that that is the only guilty verdict she's gotten. And she's already served three years of her sentence. So it truly is, to me, a slap on the wrist. And the disqualifications, yes, they hurt. But her senior career barely got started. So I guess maybe that hurts more because the few titles she did get have now been taken away. But I don't know. It's also complicated and Canada's pissed now. But to me, the math is right. I don't know. Tell me if I'm the minority. I feel like this feels correct that if you just take away one person's points, then they would just flop down maybe two spots, not three. I mean, if Canada has to appeal, then appeal. Go ahead. But I just want these athletes to get their medals. That is honestly my main concern is I feel like they need to just hold it and feel it. It's probably going to be such a traumatic release of emotions once they get it. We need to also remember that the only person traumatized from this event was not Camila. Of course, she went through the most crazy part of it and probably had the most heightened emotions and went through the most scrutiny. But every other athlete has also been traumatized by this event. Every single team, high placing team at this event did not get medals. Not one. That is traumatizing. Imagine working your entire life to get the Olympics. You finally get there. You get a placement that you're proud of and you can't celebrate for two years and you have to keep hearing about it every single day and not knowing if you're ever going to get them here today, now, ever. And then it was traumatizing. We saw for every other Terry member there, it was traumatizing for Terry, obviously by the statement, to be accused for two years of being the person that, you know, put Camila in the situation. It was traumatizing 110% for Alexandra Trusova, who had a full mental breakdown or emotional breakdown. She screamed at everybody, talking about, screaming about wanting to quit the sport and accusing her team members and coaches of knowing all along that this was a plot against her. Again, the culture is not a healthy one. Anna Sherbakova said that she felt emptiness after winning because she just couldn't react. She didn't know how to take it. Like, this was a traumatizing event. Hell, I was traumatized by watching it. So we all need to just think about how we can make long-lasting changes in the culture of sport in Russia so that this is not even a chance, a possibility that it can happen again. Athletes are responsible for what comes into their body. That is part of the rules. And if you're taking medicine without 100% knowing what it is, you're putting yourself at risk. And that is what happened with Camila Valieva. And sadly, I genuinely do believe she is the most talented skater we've seen in a generation. I'll say it again. And it sucks that this is now part of her legacy. And for years and forever, people are going to question her skills. And that sucks because I genuinely do believe she's naturally talented. But people are going to question it. And I know in Russia, she's a hero and nobody's questioning her in Russia. But it's still a stain on her legacy because we weren't able to see her thrive. We've just seen her now as a point of contention. She's become a patriotic symbol in Russia because of this contention. And I, I wish she was just known as a good athlete and less the girl who has been put through the freaking fire, honestly. It's just a really sad story all around. And I thought this was the ending of it, but now I genuinely don't know. And I'm waiting to see if Camila Valieva will make a statement, but I think she's very smartly staying quiet. I think it's better for her to stay quiet right now because so many people have so many opinions about this. Let your actions speak for themselves. Keep thriving in Russia. And I genuinely hope that she's in a good space mentally and that she's surrounded by people who love her and that she knows that, yes, yeah, she was found guilty, but she's only so much culpable. She probably knows in her head who are the main suspects of giving her tremezidine because it was in her system, all right? 100%, it was in her system, plus two other heart medications. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I have a feeling it is not gonna end anytime soon. As always, shout out to Natalia, Leslie, Timothy, Tori, and V, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.